Today we're investigating how an innocent greeting in an email took a sudden and sinister turn. You never expect something like this is going to happen to you. That email changed the life of the recipient, possibly forever, but more likely for around about 10 minutes. Amy has more. Getting marketing should be a joy. Finding out about products and services that can improve your life, what's not to like? Well, actually, a lot. Whilst I will always be thankful for the marketing that introduced me to Genos, that combined the style of Chinos with the comfort of jeans, or Freudian slippers, which combined comfortable footwear with psychoanalysis and a good pun, not all marketing gives people a good experience. Should bad marketers be locked up? You might say to me, Amy, it's not like they're stealing a car or stealing that package that the Amazon delivery driver left in plain sight because even though you were in all day, he definitely didn't ring the bell or try and hand it to you in person. And I would say one, complain about the driver, but two, yes, they're not stealing those things. They're actually taking something that's far more valuable, your time and attention. Today, we share a shocking story of such a theft and reveal a case of criminal copywriting. I was on the computer when I got an email. I didn't really recognize the name, but the subject line said keeping in touch. I'm not the best person at keeping in touch. So initially I thought, you know, I've forgotten someone's birthday or I've upset someone. Then what happened? I read the first line, which said, hey, Amy, long time no talk, hope all is well. And then a little smiley face, but just a colon and a bracket, not a colon and then a dash for a nose and the bracket. So it looked like one of those people from a gurning competition. Go on. She went on to say that because we hadn't chatted in a while, she had wanted to reach out and let me know what she'd been up to. And I mean, she was writing to me like she was a very close friend, but she wasn't a close friend, was she? Just walk us through what happened next. Then she told me about the company she owned and the services that she offered. It was a marketing pitch, wasn't it? It was. You didn't know her at all. We were just connected on LinkedIn. Adopting a friendly tone is absolutely fine in marketing, but you need to remember three things. One, you can't just manufacture a relationship out of thin air. It takes time and effort to build a connection with your target market. Bad marketing tries to rush this and get to the results without putting in effort, but you don't get good results from anything without putting in a lot of hard work. What are you doing? I'm just making a sign for my new surgery business. Didn't know you'd train to be a surgeon. I didn't train to be a surgeon. I just thought, Fancy being a surgeon, making lots of money and taking advantage of my terrible bedside manner. You can't just be a surgeon, no one will trust you. That's where you're wrong. I got my first patient arriving this morning. Nurse, do you know what we're doing? No, I, you're the surgeon. Oh, I'm not a surgeon, I just put this gown on. Whoa, whoa, what's that? Is that a chicken nugget? It looks important. Put it back, put it back. I've made a terrible mistake. Two, before you ask your customers to do anything, make sure you've given them some value in the past, whether it's content to help them make a decision, information that helps them solve a problem. You can't just ask and ask and ask for something without giving anything in return. People just won't stand for it. Can I borrow your pen? Sure, yeah. Hmm, that was easy. Can I borrow your mug? Okay. Can I have that tie? If you, yeah, if you really need it. Your jacket? This? Mm-hmm. All right. That crutch? Okay. You know those foldy sunglasses I really like? I just feel like she takes and takes and takes and takes in this relationship and I get nothing back. And three, you have to pick the right level of familiarity. Don't pretend you have a relationship with someone if you don't. Don't be over familiar. Oh, go get some biscuits from the shop. The shopkeeper's weird. She's always way over familiar making out like she knows me and then, I don't know, she seems to railroad me into buying stuff I don't want. Don't be daft. Hello. Hiya. Just some biscuits, please. You don't want these. I do want those. If I know you. You don't know me. You'll have one and then you won't be able to stop. The whole packet will be gone and then you'll feel terrible with yourself. So let's pop these to one side. I really do want the biscuits. Oranges. That's what you want. No, I don't. These will be really good for your scurvy. I don't have scurvy. I'll put these in the bag for you. Now with this milder weather, I know what you're like. You'll be wanting to go camping soon. I don't want to go camping. Why don't we have this little portable camping stove? Just some biscuits. This just came in. This is a depth micrometer. And I can put that with your camping stove with your oranges. And I think you can probably agree this has been a pretty successful shopping trip. That will be 74 pounds and 22 pence. Okay. 
The marketer fell foul of these rules. She tried to rush the relationship, ask for something without offering anything of value in return, and was far too familiar with the recipient based on what the relationship actually was. Adopting a familiar tone in your email copywriting is fine, as long as when you show up in someone's inbox, you are expected and you're offering something of value. If you're not expected, if you're only interested in getting something from them, and if you mislead your reader, it will just create a bad marketing experience. Till next time. Don't pretend you have blah, blah, blah. It looked like one of those um, gurning. <laughs> These will really help with your scurvy. <laughs>